to hosting the supernatural this is monday nights with nikki and we're going to speak on leadership you know leadership is the vital key for our lives everything rises and falls on leadership like john maxwell says and so these monday nights are leadership development nights we want to get you to the top you know we want you to experience the view from the top as a leader and so it's very important for me my heart's desire is that you will become the best leader you can be in your family in your business in your ministry and we want to train and develop supernatural leaders for this generation so that we give you that we call it the pain-free worship experience that causes you to remember us for the rest of your life so that's how we have processed it from a business perspective we use a similar arrangement the moment we see you as a potential client we're already communicating and showing you that we value you not just your money or the invoice but we value you your vision what is it you want to achieve so we're constantly communicating to our clients that this is what yeah. uh, that you are valuable that you are important that you, that we want you to have a great experience with us and in fact i remember when, when, I, when we had probably our first, second meeting, when we sat down together, you, you gave me a couple of tips and you said, son, if you're gonna have a great church, make sure your parking is great. And we've done a great job with that. Make sure the smell in the auditorium is great. Make sure the sound is great. Make sure the bathrooms are great. So we focus extensively on those four areas so we give people an amazing experience your bathroom experience you must enjoy it it must be clean it must be right. fresh the auditorium must smell right the sound must not hurt your ears it must be comfortable the parking experience the welcome so we've worked in these different four different areas and it's amazing the the results it's given to us um, when i was growing up in ministry i was taught fast pray, yeah. be prayerful, be anointed, exactly, yeah. be passionate. And I realized somewhere along the line that my fasting and my praying was not growing the church as, as, as powerfully as these areas. The levels of excellence in the service provision is greater than the product of the preaching itself. Because people will leave a church with a great preacher, but it has dirty toilets. Mm. But if the toilets are clean, or the children's ministry is clean, or the parking is good, people will stay. Because people are not, they know I can get a good word from another place. So I gotta make sure that my product surround is excellent. Yeah. So the vision is what draws all of this and demands that we have high levels of excellence in every area. That's why, and it's exactly what you say, that's why every department must know the why of the vision. The why, absolutely. So why do you clean the toilets? That sounds like a book, Dad. The why yeah. of ministry. <laughs> exactly. Write that thing. But, you know, we, we have cleaners coming here on a Sunday and they clean between the two yeah. services. We have two services back to back and they clean the, the they, they vacuum quickly the church and um, clean the toilets and stuff like that. Now, it's either a job or it's like, I know why they do this. Yes. Because yes. The, the next crowd is coming. It's going to hear the word of God. There must be no distractions, all those things. Mm -hmm. If I go to a restaurant, I don't know why it's like that, but yeah. I always go to the restroom to see, <laughs> is this place clean or is this place not clean? You mm -hmm. know? And if there's toilet rolls all over and it looks terrible, yeah. you think, I wonder if, this, if it looks like this here, I wonder how the kitchen looks mm -hmm. and how the food is going to look, mm -hmm. you know? So... It is very important that everybody understands the why, the why of the things and to make it easy for people to to have access to ministry, yeah. access to your business. Yes. Let's speak about practical things on business. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, how do we communicate effectively people coming to our businesses mm -hmm. um, or to church, for instance? How do yeah. I communicate that vision? effectively like you said jesus communicated the vision and so on mm -hmm. what are some practical things you know uh, regarding communicating do you think that in today's life websites and all these things are important websites are important because um, google has become the center of our lives uh, just to show you we, we we run one of our websites that we run 
which is um, Africa Must Read resources for Africa to, to read books and to be empowered. One of the things we discovered of the 1,000 uh, people that we get hitting our website every month, uh, probably 950 of them are coming from phones, smartphones. Wow. So it looks like people are bumping it into our, our info from uh, social media and going onto our site. So the moment a, a guest comes in, they discover Nikifa Nivestaiza. Their next question is, who is he? What else has he done? Uh, what's his profile like? Is he on Twitter? Can I follow him? Can I learn more? So they will begin to Google you. And your website must come up and it must be contemporary interactive and it must be, it, it must speak to them. I so the vision... The vision must be there. It must be clear. Your your social media side, website, Twitter, all of that must also have the same, must be a good brand ambassador. So everywhere where people will bump into your brand, it must be speaking what you stand for, what you represent, where you're going, why you're going there. That gives people a sense of ownership, a sense of belonging. Because the moment I know your vision, I'm already calculating, even without thinking it, do I belong here? Do I like where he's going? Do I think I'll enjoy the trip? So the moment I connect with that, it's already speaking to me and telling me I belong. I was telling one of my friends that one of the reasons why business people do not like to come to some of our churches is because our churches have, becoming, have become a begging center. Yeah. People come in and we're begging for money for a microphone. Exactly. We're begging for money to buy this, to buy a chair. But if our, our ministries become a center of vision, you talk about how we're going to be changing the world, what difference we're going to be making. A business person will sit and think and say, I think I understand this language. I understand that they're going somewhere to do something big. We're not just focusing on getting a microphone or a chair. So the vision must be consistently in people's faces. Put it on the wall somewhere. Put it in the bathrooms. Yeah. In our bathrooms, we have, we have little things that we've put up exactly. that are constantly communicating exactly. the vision. Where are we going? What do we want to achieve? So while you're using the bathroom, vision is speaking to you. That's so powerful. vision must be everywhere. People are looking for something significant to connect with it. Our job as leaders is to give them something significant that they can pursue. So that's powerful. Yeah. Um, I want you to, to, to speak to the, to, the, to the audience about, you know, the processes and all the things that, that you feel is important to compile this whole package mm -hmm. of vision, if we can say that. Okay. Well, to follow the two scriptures that I've just thrown at you, Proverbs 29, 18 and Habakkuk chapter 2, the first thing that you need to do is begin to write the vision. Ask yourself, why am I here on earth? What, what was I created to achieve? What, what gives me the greatest meaning, satisfaction, contentment? What is it that defines me? What is it that challenges and inspires me? Begin to write it down. And when you write it down the first time, it may not be absolutely clear. But as you begin to practice and take the first few steps, guess what? It becomes clearer. You begin to know where to. It's kind of like working on a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. You have many pieces, but you begin to see, oh, it's a zebra. Oh, it's a giraffe. You begin to see clearly what you're working on. That's so right. begin to write it down. The next step after writing it down, I'd encourage you, get yourself into some inspiring environment where you're coached, where you're empowered, where you're developed, where somebody is speaking into your life, having a look at what you're working on so that they begin to guide you and say, no, this won't work, this will work. So there's a process of getting coached, getting advised, getting taught, getting enlarged. Then after that, once the vision becomes clearer and clearer, begin to take the first step. Procrastination is the greatest enemy to the success of a vision. You'll keep saying, I'll do it next week, I'll do it next week. Once you begin to write it down, begin to move. Now, today, don't wait until tomorrow. Sit down right after this program. Begin to write down, what's my vision? Where am I going? Pick up a phone, look for a coach, a pastor, a leader, a business person, somebody in your, in your company that can coach you and enlarge you. Begin to take those steps now. And then, of course, after you've done the writing of the vision, you've gotten yourself into a coach, begin to find things that empower and add value into you. Books, CDs, coachings, teachings, resources that will enlarge your capacity and your ability to step into your next level. Remember what I op my opening statements when I spoke about current reality, desired reality. You're going somewhere. It's worth pursuing. The moment you see that vision, you've written it down. Bible says he will run. Running in the Bible is a position of passion. 
Many people I meet today are discouraged, frustrated. They are, they are low energy people. Why? Because they have no vision. Vision gives you energy. It gives you a fuel to wake up in the morning and to keep going at life. And the reason so many people are so discouraged and frustrated about life is they cannot see where they are going. Get yourself into a good coaching program. We have some good resources that, that are available for you. I do coaching. My dad does coaching through West Consulting. Get in touch. Get some resources that will stretch you and grow you. And the moment you begin to take the first few steps, the journey becomes easier, better, and more exciting. Your morale, your enthusiasm, your, your motivation becomes so strong. It's amazing, Dad, how we many people are so discouraged. Many people are just so low energy. It's like life has come to an end already. They are living, but they are not living. But vision will give you the ability to live, not just in the time frame of your life, but you will live beyond your life because your vision will keep speaking yeah. even after you're gone. Yeah. You know, vision creates culture. Yes. And the culture then is what sustains your absolutely your company. Yeah. Without that culture that your vision sets out, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Sam Chan made a very powerful statement where he said that um, you know culture eats can can mm -hmm. eat vision for lunch. You know, yeah. In the sense yes. of yes. you know, yes. I can have a glass here mm -hmm. full of water, mm -hmm. but if the glass is dirty, I'm not going to drink the water. Yep. So we have to create, after we've created the vision, let's go to number two. Mm. The, culture the culture is then yeah. established yeah. In, the, in the company, right? Yeah. So the culture should be who we are mm. and what we do and how we're going to do these yes. things together. Yes. You know, we have to watch out for false advertising uh, in our churches and in our companies. You'll have a church that says, this is love tabernacle. <laughs> and you walk in there and it's like everybody's mad you know it, that's false advertising yeah you know we are a family church Ooh. and you come there and there's like you know there's no programs for the children mm. there's no uh, curriculums for the children every day at church there's no family time so you're not a family church mm. you know uh, worship uh, first assembly or whatever and <laughs> you come in there and it's like that's not worship. Yeah. So, and in, in, in the business as well, we have to be very careful that we don't create a culture of customers first. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, are, you find out I'm not first here. <laughs> you know, and, and we can go through the yes, list. Yes. But culture is very important. Yeah. After you define the vision of the church or of your business, I think it's very important that you establish the, the, uh, the mission and then obviously from the mission, we go into the uh, process of how to establish this. After we've built a vision, we have to then establish culture. And mm. the culture of, of, a, of a business, of a church is very important. Very, very absolutely. important. We absolutely. can have the most beautiful vision. Mm -hmm. If the culture is wrong of the church or yeah. of, the, of the business, we are in big trouble. Nobody will eat of that. Yeah. Um, so we can have a plate of food and I can put on this plate a beautiful piece of fish or meat all the vegetables are beautiful mm. that's the vision mm. Mm. but if the plate is dirty sure. you're not eating yeah. it's not going to happen yeah. so our culture needs to be the second thing of the vision mm. is let's create a culture yeah. let's create a culture that is family oriented welcome, service um we do great things for God. You can take your company from a good company to a great company if you just do the culture right. Yeah. And then to implement phrases. Mm. You know, um, I think you need to get a phrase for your company. What is KFC? <laughs> Finger licking good. Everybody yeah. knows that. Everyone, yep. It's not this long vision. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I used to do that. I had a whole page of a vision. Mm. But nobody remembers that. It's, yeah. Yeah. They need to remember yeah. the phrase. Um, so Paul said this. I want to close with this. He says, I do one thing. One thing I do. Mm -hmm. yes. He didn't do 10 things. Yes. He did one thing. He became a specialist. He became focused. a specialist. In yeah. that thing, you know? yeah. And I think that's what we have to be careful of is that we try to push people to have streams of income. 
So we have 10 companies that we're running, and they're good, average, mm. you know, and we don't focus on the one mm. that really can become successful. So we have to bring our vision from all these streams of incomes, whatever, to become one, have one main stream. Yes, you have streams that feed the stream, but one stream, one thing I do, and then create culture yeah. around that. You yeah. know. And culture has got nothing to do with race, mm. backgrounds, mm. traditions. The culture is who you are. Yeah, absolutely. The CEO of the company. Absolutely. The senior pastor of the church. Who are you? That's what you start in. Absolutely. Yes. You know? yes. So culture is very, very, very uh, important. And uh, it's, can we speak about strategy quickly before we go? We okay. need to get, get a strategy in place. <laughs> you know? We, we, we spoke about the, the, the how and, the, and the, the why. Now, strategy is about solving the what. The how do we do this? This is what we want to do, but how are we going to do it? So when we start looking at strategy, you're now looking at the journey again. What are we going to do to achieve this? So it's amazing from a church perspective or leadership perspective that many people never think strategy. They never think strategically. Looking up from the top, down at the, the vision, this is what we want to achieve. And what are we going to do to achieve that? So strategy is basically breaking down the whole vision into uh, smart goals. The things that you know are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. Right. You're, you're now able to look at the different areas because it is the strategy that you put in place that now places a demand on the resources that you have in the organization. The people that can communicate, the people that are friendly to people, the people that do sound, the people that do parking. The resources that gather are based on what the strategy is communicating. So breaking, sitting down and having a strategic session with your key players is vital yeah. because you're now communicating to them that I need your wisdom and your input to make this vision a reality. Without strategic thinking, you will never be able to take the vision and make it a reality. So every leader must be an expert at creating strategy or must have a key person that is close to them who's very good at creating strategy. The step-by-step -step process of making the vision a reality. You know, Joseph had a strategy. Yes. He didn't yes. just, you know, it's like going to the airport. Where are you going? No. <laughs> uh, there, no. Yeah. You know, you've got a destination. Yes. Yes. And like you said in the beginning, there's a strategy to that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to eat there. Mm -hmm. Rest here. Mm -hmm. Strategy yeah. is absolutely, absolutely vital of importance, you know. That's true. Uh, and um, Joseph had a strategy to get all the wealth mm -hmm. of the world mm -hmm. uh, to his place. Yes. It was broken down into five phases. Mm -hmm. And then he started implementing the strategy. Yeah. You know, I always say, Ideas are very sexy. You know, I can have an idea. Hey, man, we're going to build a 5,000-seater church. And we're going to expand. Those ideas are, mm. are awesome. Mm. It's very sexy. Yeah. The strategy is a different thing. And that's what makes the difference. I'm telling you, yeah. you know, you, we, we will put together a conference and the ideas, you know, let's get everybody together. The strategy is good. Mm. Oh, the idea is good. But the strategy is this. Is there enough parking? Mm -hmm. um, is there enough credit card machines yeah is there enough toll rolls we can go through the list yes those are the strategies yeah. we want yeah. you know so if i look at the bible joseph had a strategy uh, daniel had a strategy mm. moses had a strategy david had a strategy yeah. solomon had a strategy yeah jesus had a strategy every single one everything jesus wasn't just born and everybody's like, okay, Jesus is born. He had a strategy 2,000 years before he came to the earth. Yes. He yes. already announced through the prophets, the Messiah is coming, it's the coming. Messiah is coming. Yeah. He advertised, advertised before he came. Yeah. Was born not just on any day, was born on a specific day where everybody could see him. Yeah. And when he died, he just didn't die mm -hmm. on a Tuesday. He Planned that to, whole yes, thing out. I'm yes. going to die in Jerusalem on Passover where mm. everybody has to be there. Yeah. You know, yeah. strategy, strategy, strategy. So 
Final thoughts before we close this program. Final thoughts. Let me just build on that closing one that you, when you have a vision, you have to work on the strategy. I, I coach quite a number of pastors, church planting, church growth, and development of leaders. And it's amazing how many of them have always thought, we're going to do it by the Spirit. You ask them, how are you going to grow your church? We're praying. We're going to, I mean, these are the things of the Spirit. And I say, yeah, I agree. There's the anointing factor. There's the God factor. We cannot deny that. But you need a step-by-step -step strategy. And looking at Jesus, looking at the apostles, they all were very strategic in their thinking. He says, go to Judea, go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. It was strategic. Build capacity in each place. So it's not by the Spirit. It is by strategy. The Spirit comes to anoint, to bless, to empower the strategy. Because where there is no strategy or where there is no vision, God has nothing that he can bless. The capacity, the size of what we will achieve is based on the size of the vision, the culture we create, and the strategy we put in to implement it. Yeah. Well, if you aim at nothing, you're going to hit nothing. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> we have to be very specific in our targets, mm -hmm. in our way we approach life. Yes. And... Um, really do the, you know, the whole aspect of life, mm. leadership mm. in the whole. Well, you know, we are speaking about vision. We're speaking about just implementing vision, strategies, processes. This is very important. For those of you who are watching, you know, if you want to have a successful business, the first thing you have to do is to have a vision and a strategy in Absolutely. place. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Without a vision, you can't just wake up in the morning and say, I think I'm going to start a business today. <laughs> it doesn't happen like that. You have to have a vision, a strategy, and start mm -hmm. getting people around you. Your yeah. inner circles yeah. Yeah. must become very, very close. You cannot share your dream with anybody and yeah. everybody. They are going to kill your dream. They're going to destroy your dream. They are not going to believe in your dream. So keep it close to you. Deal with your inner circle, your family around you. Pastor, you are so great, man, having this program. Yeah, it's been uh, wonderful. To, to, with you. We're going to come back and we're going to speak about, you know, the thousand um, uh, become, measurements. So yeah, uh, yeah. Just, just give us an appetizer on that. Oh, how to become a leader that is equal to a thousand. Enlarging your leadership capacity, growing yourself, taking yourself to your next leadership lead level. Yeah. So don't miss our next program with Pastor Tish on how to become a thousand leader yeah. man that's gonna yeah. i'm looking forward to that <laughs> and so great. don't forget our monday nights with nikki and our special guest is pastor tish and we're going to have a great time together so thank you for joining us we want to pray for you mm -hmm. and we're going to believe god that vision will come yeah. strategy will come yeah. that the holy spirit will anoint you and and be with you on that you can take your life from just thinking about stuff to really implementing it mm. and start getting your entrepreneurial spirit on the go. So thank you for watching, hosting The Supernatural. Uh, join me on all the social media platforms and also send us your prayers and testimonies. Get the book and become a partner with us. Pastor Tish, I want you to pray for the viewers and bless them that the spirit of entrepreneurship will come, vision will come, mm -hmm. and that strategy will come. Absolutely. Amen. Let's do that. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the wisdom, the nuggets that we've shared today. I pray that you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that you enlarge our capacity like you did with Jabez. I pray, Father, for every viewer that has listened to this and has been inspired, stirred up and challenged. I pray that you give them birth out of their heart, vision, Father, for greatness, vision for their next level. I pray, Father, that you give them a strategy, a clear strategy on how to move from current yes. reality to the desired reality. I pray that you surround them with the resources of yes. people, leadership resources, books, materials, knowledge, understanding that will help them to step into their next level. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, I pray your blessing and a fresh anointing upon those that have become discouraged with running after and pursuing their vision. Strengthen them afresh, oh God, and give them new energy to rise yes. up and take the Jesus, challenge man. and be a blessing. I pray for our nations in Africa, Lord, Lord, that you'd raise up leaders of integrity, yes. leaders of vision, leaders with direction, leaders that love and value their people yes. and that will take us to a beautiful desired reality. I pray all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, Praise thank you God. for watching, hosting the supernatural. We'll see you back here next Monday, same place, same time.